Hello, this is Dennis Seitzma, Dennis John Seitzma Productions, Homestead, Florida, USA. We're south of Miami, a little bit north of Florida City, where the end of the Florida Turnpike is, north of Key Largo, about 20 miles. Uh, to my project van, I'm working on the electrical system. Um, I lost my windows, power to the windows and power to the uh, the uh, VSS signal to the 4L60E transmission. And this happened a couple times. And normally what happens is the A pin on the ignition switch burns out. And the book says that's connector two eight, Charlie 289. Um, so you have to replace the ignition switch. And these special screws that you don't want to lose these. Um, these are, I believe they're SAE 10-24 threads, I think. They could be metric, but I'm not sure. So if somebody in the audience knows, this uh, steering column was used on many General Motors vehicles over the years. So, and this is a tilt, tilt, but anyway, you got two of those screws and the way this thing mounts is uh, you got two screws that hold it and when you install a new switch you want to do the the screw closest to the firewall first and the screw closest to the steering wheel last because the on this generation of Astro vans the 4L60E transmission Use this uh, BTSI solenoid, which has got a little plunger on it and a rod on the steering column, which prevents, it's a safety feature and a good one. But when that solenoid shorts out, you'll blow a fuse. And uh, it happened to me on a road trip once. It was very uncomfortable. If you know about it, it's very easy to unplug it. And I thought about fusing it, but it's a safety feature, so... I think I'm going to leave it the way General Motors left it. But that's one failure scenario is the uh, BTSI shorts out and you blow the fuse. The other failure scenario is the A-pin burns out. And usually that burns out because they didn't rate it properly for a dual air or dual heater. And this van has dual air, front and rear. And when I would put the fan on high which you'd like to do here in South Florida in the summer, uh, especially towing a boat or whatever, you want the air to circulate in the cabin, it would burn out the ignition switch. And I've had to replace this switch several times. And the BTSI is held in place by the bolt that is, uh, let's see, it goes that way. Well, actually, it, you know, it's like that on the steering column but uh or the other way around let's see oh it's like it's like that the screw here the sheet metal screw is in the back it's held by a sheet metal screw for the btsi bracket at the closest to the firewall and the front screw so you have to do the rear screw on the ignition switch first and then mount the btsi on top of it and make the adjustments now to remedy how much current was being drawn and burning out that switch. I added this 80 amp relay. And what I did is at the A pin on the load side of the circuit, I cut the wire and that wire I added down here to run the relay. So when I turn the ignition key on, the only current going through that A contact now is uh, enough to power the relay. And this relay is uh, rated for 80 amps. I guess that the other side of the ignition switch in that circuit uh, had enough current to power everything in the van and it's got a fused link that's behind the battery anyway so I didn't fuse one side's hot and the other side is the load now and uh, the load side where I cut it out to switch is what so if I had on a road trip to bypass this uh, Rube, Rube Goldberg, I haven't decided where I'm going to mount it yet, so I haven't I haven't mounted it yet. I left the wires extra long, um, so I can mount it someplace when I think what to do. After I finish the installing the BTSI solenoid, 
Uh, this should, if I had to put it back to factory, all I'd have to do is run a jumper from where I cut the wire to, to the load side to restore the circuit back to factory. But anyway, um, the other problem with the electrical system on this generation of Astro Vans is they have these four fused links. One fused link is for the uh, the 4WAL Kelsey Hayes ABS, goes right to it pretty much to give that power. And the way those fail is uh, you, you can apply 12 volts to the connector on the ABS and see if the electric motor burned out or if it's a control board issue. You can usually repair those by reflowing the solder on the uh, control board. Uh, but it, it's hermetically sealed, so getting it apart and back together again is uh, a little dicey uh, to re-solder. But if the electric motor shot, then you need to find another one from a salvage yard. But these would fail right at the firewall. So to, to get around that problem, I cut the wires going to the firewall, and I ran it right to the positive terminal of uh, the battery. Uh, yeah, and I got the quick disconnect, so when I'm working on it, I can disconnect power to it quickly. Uh, more convenient that way. But And I've marked all four circuits. And so one circuit goes to the ABS. The other circuit goes directly to the AC relay. And you can see the, the hot side. And then this side of the relay, the control for it, is through the electrical system, through the ignition switch. So... And the fuel pump relay pretty much the same. So I don't have any problems with what they did for the front AC. It's just when you turn the rear AC on that you really get into problems. And uh, so these are the fixes I did to improve this project Astro Van. And I'm still looking for a body shop that can help me with this uh, corrosion at the bottom of the windshield. And the other getting the windshield not to leak. I put it in a body shop in 2017 and I've been trying to just talk that body shop into doing more work on it, but uh, there's labor shortages now of skilled labor. So this, this work on the windshield may have to wait, uh, but mechanically I'm trying to get the machine going. Anyway, the upshot is I've improved I've replaced the ignition switch with a new ignition switch. I've improved the circuit so that the future won't burn it out again when I put the AC on high. And I've solved the problem with the links failing at the bulkhead. And the BTSI is a necessary feature for safety, so don't bypass it. Um, but the, because uh, you can st start the vehicle in gear without the BTSI and uh, uh, can cause death or injury. Uh, Do-it-yourself work can cause death or injury. So you take do any of this at your own risk. Uh, but that said, um, put your foot on the brake without the BCS. Make sure the vehicle's not gonna move. And I probably still have the engine seeking problem. I did an in intake manifold replacement recently. And uh, of course my windows work now. And the front AC is blowing, which it would do anyway. But the thing is, is the rear AC wouldn't work before. You hear it blowing back there at high with the A-pin burned out. So uh, I think I'm making some progress here. I'm gonna finish installing the BTSI and uh, make the final adjustments. I think these screws are 10-24 SAE thread, but don't, don't lose them. And the BTSI, the other screw could be, uh, I think, a self-tapping screw would be fine. Um, so, thanks for watching. Uh, give it a thumbs up if you, if this video helped you in any way. And uh, please give it a thumbs up if you 
like what I'm doing here. This is uh, Dennis Seatsma, Dennis John Seatsma Productions, Homestead, Florida, USA. Thank you for watching.